Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. I hope you have your coffee with you and your Bible, and uh, we can go into this Bible study in Colossians. And by the way, this is good good coffee. Actually, there's no coffee in this cup. It's, it's like for the last couple of recordings, there's been no coffee in this cup. Um, if you look in the bottom of the cup, it's got the old dried up coffee, and so it's just a prop. Um, but the Bible's true, so we can go into the Word of God together. So, um, Colossians chapter 3, um, we are, we are um, looking at how the theology of Colossians chapters 1 and 2 affects our day-to-day -day lives. The, specifically, the fact that we have been dead, buried, and resurrected with Christ. That when he died on the cross, he was buried and he was resurrected. We were in the body of Christ. We, ex we went through that with him. And it has impacted, and Paul calls us to the reality that there is an impact that it has on our day-to-day -day lives. And so we're kind of on, um, packaging that or fleshing that out in Colossians chapter 3. Um, and so I want to look at that with us. But before we do that, let's uh, bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us and thank you for your grace that you've given to every one of us where we are right now. I thank you that you have peace for us and patience and kindness for us. I pray that you would touch us with these realities and that you administer to us your minister to us your truths. We pray for revival in this area that you would just minister to those uh, who need to see Jesus, especially in this time when there is distraction from our regular uh, mundane and ordinary routines and we are thinking about other things. Let your Holy Spirit penetrate the lives and minds and hearts of people in Henderson so that they would want more of you and be drawn into a relationship with you. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I hope you're praying with me. I'm, I've committed myself to praying every uh, every morning at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I, have, I have this thing on my phone where an alarm sounds at 9 o'clock and whatever I'm doing, I stop and dismiss myself from what I'm doing and uh, go pray. And it's just a very short, a lot of times just a very short prayer asking God um, to send his revival. Because again, I think this is a strategic spiritual time in the life of this community and the world around us where people are being interrupted from their routines and challenged to think uh, about things they've not thought about before. So uh, I, I hope you're praying, set your alarms on your clocks, on your uh, phones and pray with me at nine o'clock and there'll be a lot of people praying for a revival. So Colossians chapter uh, three, uh, we are looking at uh, how this uh, truth of our death, burial and resurrection has an impact on us Last, uh, yet last time we, we talked about how it has an impact on what we want, our desires, the things we go after. This morning, I wanted us to talk about how it has an impact on not only what we want, but also what we wear. And this is, the term, this is based on the terminology that Paul uses in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 14, where he, uses, he, talks, about, he talks about our attributes as if there were items of clothing and so you'll see that as I read this He's, Paul says put to death therefore there's another connecting word therefore it, it, it connects uh, the word uh, since since the theology of since the theology of chapters 1 and 2 are true therefore some things should happen so he says put to death therefore what belongs to your nat your earthly nature and again I want to re revisit this because this is so important uh, it says you the chapters 1 and 2 says, you have been buried, dead, buried, and resurrected. You have died. And then in verse 5, he says, therefore, put to death. So there's a, there's a you are dead, and there is a you are to be dying aspect of the reality of how, who we are in Christ. So, so put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your na earthly nature. And then he goes into uh, this wardrobe that uh, it's basically it's, it's since the theology of chapters 1 and 2 are tr is true, therefore, take off the old wardrobe. Um, and then he goes through this list of things that uh, we used to wear, uh, our old wardrobe, and he says, I don't want you wearing this anymore. Uh, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, and lies. These are all uh, notes. Uh, uh, these are all things that belong to our old nature that Paul says I, we should not wear this anymore. 
And then he goes on in verse 12 to say, put on, uh, therefore, as God's, is that word therefore again, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves. So put on, take off the old wardrobe, put on the new wardrobe, and this is the new wardrobe, uh, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness. And then he says, above all these other virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Love is kind of the, it's kind of the overcoat uh, that we put on. So here's this, this new wardrobe. He, we have an old wardrobe and a, and a new wardrobe. He says, you need to take off the old wardrobe, put on the new, new wardrobe. But here's the thing, and I want to kind of highlight this. I only have a few minutes to do this kind of stuff. There's so much stuff in these texts. Here's the thing about a, a wardrobe. Um, you, can't, you, you have to know you have it before you can wear it. Okay, you have to know, if you ever, you know, my daughter, Emma, has got this closet and it's too small for her, she says, and, and, and yet it's just all packed out with all this stuff. And if you ever had a closet where you, you have all these clothes and it's just kind of packed out closet, it's really easy for some items in the closet um, for you to forget that you have it, okay? What's, where, you know, I uh, say, Sherry, where's that shirt I used to wear that had the, you know, a picture of the deer and all this kind of stuff. Where is that shirt at? It's in your closet. Well, I can't find it. So you, it's easy to lose things. It's easy to not know that you have things, okay? Before you can wear the wardrobe, you have to know you have it. Some Christians, and here's the point, some Christians think that the only thing that they have to wear is the old wardrobe. Some Christians think that they're locked in a wardrobe that only has these things, sexual immorality, malice, anger, rage, greed, slander, filthy language, lies. Some Christians think that's the only, that's my only choices when I, when I go uh, to wear something day to day. Um, and they don't realize that they have an entirely new wardrobe. Um, some, some Christians think, you know, I used to think that when I needed patience, and some people say, you know, if you, if you need patience, you know, pray for it, but don't pray, be careful what you pray for, that kind of thing. So I used to think, well, if I need patience, i got to pray for it. Well, that's not strictly true according to this scripture. Um, the verb in the text is not pray for it or wait for it or ask, ask for it. The verb in the text is put it on. Okay. In other words, it's in your closet. It's in your closet. Because of Colossians chapters 1 and 2, because of the truth and the theological truths of chapters 1 and 2, since they are true, you have a new wardrobe. Since chapters 1 and 2 are true, therefore, you can take off the old and you can put on the new. It used to be that all we had to wear was anger. We'd get up in the morning, the only thing we had to choose, anger, just rrr, rough all day long. And that's just, you put your anger face on in the morning, you keep it on that line, that's your, that's your wardrobe, that's what you had. But now we can choose, as people who are, who have, been, who have gone through Colossians chapter, chapters 1 and 2, we can choose kindness over anger. We can choose patience over malice. We can choose love over lust. Every day when you get up in the morning, you get to choose what to wear. Compassion is in your closet. Kindness is in your closet. Humility is in your closet. Gentleness is in your closet. Patience is in your closet. Forgiveness is in your closet. They are already yours because you've gone through death, burial, and resurrection with Christ. And the question is that we have to ask ourselves every day that we wake up in the morning. The question is, are we going to take off of the old rack or are we going to take off of the new rack? Paul says, put on the new, take off the old. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for the challenge for us to uh, continue to live out this, these theological truths in Colossians chapters 1 and 2. And as we live them out, let them have their full impact on the way we live our lives. Not only what we want, but also what we wear. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. I'll, I'll try to have a cup of coffee uh, ready for the next time we have a devotional. God bless.